it's, it's super early, I'm heaps tired as you can probably tell. And today I'm going to Brett from Carmaker Vibes house again, um, so that we can get cracking on building my wheels. So, gonna have nice wheels on the stage. Oh. Maybe not today, but hopefully we'll finish rebuilding them and then I got a few things to iron out with them before I, um, before I can get tires mounted up and get them put on and get my suspension changed and my guards fitted and stuff, so. I actually haven't said Merry Christmas or Happy New Year yet, so even though it's a little bit late, <laughs> we're into February now. And um, I've got a haircut, so I have short hair now. Well, not short, but way shorter. It's way too hot in Brisbane. Like, we, I think we've been up to like 44 degrees this summer, and I'm just about to go rebuild my wheels in the middle of summer in like 40 degree heat in a little shed. So that's gonna be fun. So we're all good to go. So I just made it here to Brett's house. Any of you who have caught my wheel fitment testing video will remember this driveway right there where that MR2 is. I'm gonna go suss what's up and unload the car and we can get started. I've never rebuilt wheels before myself. It's mostly just gonna be Brett teaching me how to do it and I'm going to get some footage of it to make sure that you guys also can learn how so you can do it yourself from home. Because apparently it's not that hard, I've, I've uh, been told. As long as you know what you're doing. I even bought a sweat towel today because I know it's gonna get hot. That's a fact. Let's get this started. I've got like a dark spot on my lens, I wonder what that's from. That's better, not sure what those dark bars across my camera were, but here's everything laid out. New lips, wheels. This is the bent one, so you can see the big bend here and the little bend here, and then it's also got a flat spot on the back, which I need to get rolled out, but. So basically, with these, um, you got these little nuts right the way around. Oh, hey, hey buddy. <laughs> You got these little retaining bolts all the way around the wheel and factory those are torque down to 36 pound feet and I think these ones are apparently a T40 Torx bit um, so you want to get a T40 Torx bit something to get them undone with like an impact gun or something and um, then on the side oh, excuse me pup on the side here we've cut out a little bit of the oh. sealant seal? I don't know cut out a bit of the sealant um, and you can see that these ones aren't welded. If your lips and your barrels are welded, you've got a whole other thing to do. You've got to machine them or get these open by milling them um, open. Uh, but mine, luckily, are not welded, just sealed, so it's just the bolts and the sealant. So pretty much you cut the sealant out, take the bolts out, and this will come apart. You put it back together, bolt it back together, and seal it back up, and then you're all good to go. Sort of. That's the gist of it. So just cutting both sides of the sealant out to cut like a wedge out so it gets right down into where it's joined together. There you go. That's a job for you. Yeah, I'll do that. So you want to clean the sealant out fairly well to the point where there's literally almost nothing in there. And to do that, the technique you want to be using is you want to push it. I'll try to get a side on view of it to make it a little bit easier to see. But what you want to do is you want to have the knife on an angle like this. You want to dig it right down into the hole there and drag it along until no sealant is like getting grinded away anymore. But basically you want to clean out 99% of the sealant, Brett said. Yeah, definitely try to use that like angle on this side, pressing right up against the wheel. Then angle on this side, pressing right up against the wheel and cut like the wedge out. And then you can go deeper the second time around. Once you've got the massive chunk of it out, I put the knife right down in there and just cut as deep into that gap as I can just to try and break the seal. <laughs> right now he's just loosening the bolts on the inside. I'm pretty sure I don't need to film this. I'm sure they've seen bolts be nuts and bolts and undone hundreds of times. So he's gone around loosening every single one. Now once you loosen them just take them fully apart, pop them in a container so you don't lose any of them because that wouldn't be good. Genuine wedge bolts. That's pretty cool. So you can see I've got all the bolts out here. Um, we've already done one and Brett's just putting the bolts back in that so you can see that's how they look now with the bigger lifts. Because this rim's bent um, right above two of the um, spokes here, it's going to be harder to get out. A lot harder, maybe. Oh, yeah, it's a sledgehammer. Yeah, it's very possible. Put two bolts back in across here so this doesn't get like wobbled around. Yeah. Oh. 
get a sledgehammer. The other one was way easier. What he did was he flipped it upside down, so because the face is on the outside here, and pretty much just stomped it. And then to get the barrel apart from each other, made sure he ran a blade around all the ceiling, and then used the um, rubber end of a hammer just to like um, slowly like bump it off, and it broke free eventually. There you can see is the old lip. Don't need that anymore. So yeah, ended up just like we broke the face off that one that time. Um, we hammed the dents out a little bit, but they didn't come off too much. So we ended up just rotating the face to the where one of the gaps was where the dents are, and then just kind of like twisted it out. It worked, so that's what matters, I guess. So yeah, you just run a blade now over this surface to make sure there's no sealant. Make sure it's like a pretty clean surface at least. Now that you've got the face off. Could sand it, or you could wire brush it, or heaps of stuff. Yeah, true. It's gonna line up. There's like one larger hole in each lip, so in this one, it's this hole here, it's bigger than all the others. So you just make sure that lines up with the valve stem and then all the other holes line up. And there's a big hole in the face, which is right there. Yeah, same deal. Carefully not to scratch the crap out of everything. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Oh, where's the... So here's our ball hardware. M8 spine tool is what these ones are. The guy that I bought the lips off said that it was a 40 Torx bit, but it wasn't. Apparently crayons like to do things differently. Weds. Shout out to Weds for being retards. Can't just be normal like everyone else. At least now you've got it if you ever see it again, or if you ever have to do any more weds. Yeah, no, I don't like 17s. <laughs> 18s, any of these wheels are too big. Yeah, too heavy. if you have wheels bigger than 15s, don't talk to this man. Yeah, don't come and see me, I'm not interested. He he's won't already, respond to you. These have to be done up by hand, because obviously you can't get a tool in here. Yeah, true. Otherwise, normally I do them up with a barrel gun. Yeah, that is kind of annoying, this like big bump in the barrel. Put them all in by hand and nip them all up by hand. Then go around and tie them all. Yeah, fair call. Yeah. If you don't do them all up by hand, you can end up with a slight misalignment and um, you'll get like three quarters of the way around and one of the bolts won't go back in. The more you know. Have you still got any wheels up in that rack? Right. Don't try and get them down. Sure. No, I won't. I'll just show them. Look at these. Jeez. So they're like usually 15s or 14s is what he specializes in. Look at the stretch on that. What the hell? Damn. So yeah, these are all his wheels for his um, just various cars that he has. And then his, he built some wheels for his wife's MR2, which is pretty sweet as well. So yeah, you can see over there, that's a MR2 with uh, some Enkis. I forget the name of those Enkis though. Mr. Wheel Building Whiz here, he reckons, just sort of... They're all talked and now <laughs> they're being locked tight. They're talked to Brett Mattingly arm strength spec. They're talked to a between a wrist and a arm um, forearm <laughs> spec. So they're... That's pretty spec. accurate torque spec, right? So they're supposed to be 36 pound feet. So That sounds better. right. But he didn't. do you even have a torque wrench? Yeah, my arm. Right there. <laughs> hey, that is a torque wrench. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. take that. And then and then we use what is this? Loctite. Super wicking. Super wicking grade. Um oh it's blurry, but anyway, super wicking grade Loctite to make sure the bolts stay where they're supposed to. Yo, so I'm about three quarters of the way through now. Um they're looking real good, hey, like this is the smaller the pair with the smaller lips. And they look like, even they look big. That's the pair with the bigger lips there. Damn, that's just like, I'm so stoked man, like honestly, it's ridiculous. I'm just onto the last one now, as you can see here. Um, I've got the gold sticker, I actually bought these. These are off three piece US. Um, basically my center caps are trash. 
So you can see there my center cap's pretty trash. These are a sticker that go over your center caps and just like sort of neaten them up and make them look a little better because it's pretty common for them to go bad. Uh, Brett's just had to run off to a machine shop to pick up some work he's getting done. He builds a bunch of custom stuff and at the moment electric steering racks is what he's been doing heaps of. So if any of you in mostly, I guess, the Brisbane area need an electric steering rack, basically what he does is he replaces your hydraulic steering rack pump with an electric one and gets rid of all your hydraulic power steering lines and everything. And it leaves way more space in your engine bay and makes everything a whole lot cleaner and makes the steering feel way better. So if any of you are interested in that, hit up Car Make Revive. That's um, Brett's business that he does all this stuff with. He um, builds wheels as well, but this is really kind of like a special thing for him to help with my 18 inches. He usually only does really 15s and that's about it. Um, 15s, 16s, and he did 17s for his wife's car. I think this is the first that he said he's done before. If you want to do this at home, figure out what bit you need for your bolts and get a torque wrench and torque them down to proper specs. Um, for these, they're 36 foot pounds. And we're also using Loctite to keep them in there. Just make sure that they don't come loose at all because that's the last thing you want with wheels, obviously. So yeah, massive shout out to Brett and the guys at Car Make Revive because he has helped me so much with this and I would not have been able to do this by myself. So I'll leave a link in the description below to his Facebook page um, so that you can check his stuff out. He has a really cool video that he put up of... He has these cool little like mobility scooters that he's turned into like a drift scooter. It's sick. Uh, it's up in his shed, so I'll probably show you later in the video. But yeah, he's got this sick video of him and his mates going out on these drift mobility scooters. So definitely check that out. Um, I'll put the link down there as well to that. So yeah. Anyways, let's get back to building the wheels, I suppose. So there you go. I've um, finished hand tightening all the bolts. I'm waiting for Brett to get back before he talks them all down to spec and puts the Loctite in them and whatnot just because, you know, he has done it a lot more times than I have. But that's how they are now. They look incredible. As you can see, um, Brett has his torque wrench. So yeah, just tightening up the last two wheels and then we're gonna seal them, so. I know I didn't film this, to be honest. So he's just like rolling the wheel forward and really slowly laying a bead of sealant. Like you can see there. Oh, you were saying. Oh, yeah. That's like a really consistent Oops. bead too. That oh. was until then. Until, until the then. Mm. There we go. And then, just runs his finger along like that to sort of smooth it out. So it looks like that. And now it's all sealed up and in a day it's all hard and sealed and ready to go. That's the only thing that stops from leaking. And I have some pretty wheels. The infamous scooter. This thing's so sick. I'm one of them. Is that like a legit, or is it, or is it just like a bride like no, cover? I just made it. Oh, you made it. I wanted to make it up. That's so cool. So this is his like drift scooter. You can see it's got like plastic stuff on the back, sort of like a um, what do they call those things? Uh, Green uh, machines or whatever. They have the plastic wheels yeah, in the back. I don't know. To, so it can drift. Does it actually have enough power to like do a decent it's drift? A 125cc quad bike engine. That 125cc quad bike engine. That's crazy. Did you build this yourself? Yeah. What yeah. the hell? Building a race car Miata. Oh, by the way, it has wheels on it this time. No, uh, that's a front wheel. That's a front wheel. Yeah, it's just sitting there. So the rear wheels are going to be bigger. Well, it's a 10. The rear wheels are 11 and 11 and a half. Are they lower offsets too? No, they're big, bigger offset. Oh, higher offset, okay. So they're fatter, they look more dish. More so dish. this is a front wheel and it sits this far outside the guard and the rear wheel is going to be another inch and a half bigger and it's going to have more dish. And you say that my wheels don't fit. <laughs> yeah, well the difference is my car's already cut up and I can do whatever the hell I want with it. So yeah. I have to drive it on the road. That's true. But this thing's so sick. Oh dude, the twin pipes, are they like what, one inch or something? That's sick. And then... Baffles in the back of them because it's way too loud. Yeah, dude. Car Make Revive. So definitely check Car Make Revive out on Facebook. Anyways, thanks so much, man. That's alright. I appreciate your help. I couldn't have done today without any help.
You got too many toys, more than you know what to do with. Oh, there's too many things to do. Not enough time. Oh, and this is the MR2 that I showed before. Look at fitment on the wheels that he built for his wife's car. I reckon it's perfect, but he reckons it pokes too much because it's going to be a daily, so... I guess that makes sense. Not everyone's like, wants to commit. But it's nice, it's got a bright seat and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope that now that you've watched this, you can go out and if you need to rebuild wheels yourself, you have the knowledge and, and you can do that. Save yourself a bit of money, because that's always good. If you liked what you saw, uh, definitely hit the like button or comment below. Um, let me know what you want to see more of, what you'd like, what you don't like. Just let me know anything. I do like to hear feedback from you guys. Or if you want to keep up to date with the shenanigans I get up to from here on out, uh, hit the subscribe button down below. And you can keep up to date with everything and watch me try to fit these massive wheels on Astasia. Um, also, something else that I... I uh, haven't really talked about yet is that on the 1st of March I'm going over to Japan um, which is pretty cool I'm really excited to go over to Japan we have heaps of stuff planned most of which is based around cars so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna bring my camera and try to film as much as I can over there going to Fuji going to different drift circuits driving different higher cars around like 32 GTRs A86's um, we have a couple of contacts over there hopefully that we'll be able to link up with and you'll be able to see some videos of maybe some drifting or just different car stuff that we in general do over there so yeah if you would like to see stuff like that then definitely hit that subscribe button because that'll be coming as soon as i get over there so all right see you guys kind of not clear last night because we finished right in the dark uh, how it looked and what was going on so I'm gonna quickly show you how it looks in the engine